and welcome to Great British Ghosts. Today we're in Gloucestershire. Later on, I'll be visiting the ragged Cot Inn, where the robbery of a stagecoach led to some ghostly goings on. But first of all, I've come here to the ancient Ram Inn, which is known to be one of the most haunted houses in the country. And apparently, it's a pretty unique place. The Ram Inn in Wootton Under Edge is believed to date from the 14th century, but the site itself is said to date back to pagan times, when it was used as both a sacred site and burial ground. Over the years, hundreds of visitors, paranormal groups and its current owner have reported all manner of ghosts, demons and poltergeists. Local paranormal researcher Chris Howley agreed to show me around. Lots of stories to tell. Well, this is the ancient Ram Inn. As you can see, the building in front of us now is basically 14th century. But the land dates back to pagan times. We were actually on a pagan burial ground. What does that mean? Well, pagans were very ritualistic and they would, they would bury their bodies in mass graves. And so, it's reported that the energy from these mass graves, uh, the, the unrest spirits have been heaped all together, will cause chaos um, in, in any location. And, and the ramen is no exception. I mean, the atmosphere inside is demonic. It feels cold, dark, chilling. We're, we've got poltergeists, sex demons, ghosts, spirits, you name it. They're all in. Do you want to come inside? Not particularly. I'll go to the pub. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, I'll follow you. This is um, quite ramshackle. It is. I mean, if we go through the main living room and on into the main area of the building, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this before. What, into here? Gee, it's so cold. It's freezing, isn't it? It's a, yeah, it's got a really cold feel. It's, it's got an atmosphere all of its own, this place. Whoa, look at that. That's enough to scare you, isn't it? Well, John Humphrey is the current owner of the mansion. He is quite an eclectic collector. I can of, see, <laughs> of stuff. Of anything. Um, now, John moved into the Ram Inn in 1968. And this area here is where he spent his first night. And John, at the time, did not realise the Ram Inn was haunted until the middle of the night he was disturbed by the sheets being pulled and what he describes as a forceful hand grabbing hold of him and pulling him out of bed onto the floor. Absolutely terrified him. John, when you bought this house, did you know it was haunted? No. When did you find out? The first night. And what happened? Something got in bed with me. What do you mean something got in bed with you? Well, fortunately, three films have been made about it. It's something called Incubus. Incubus and Succubus, male and female. And I was thrown from one side of the room to the other and pinned up against the wall. John eventually did research as to what was going on in the Ram Inn and they discovered that the bed had been put over an ancient grave. They had people in and did the excavation that you can see here and bones were unearthed from the ground. But what's quite disturbing about the bones that they uncovered, they were the bones of children and amongst those bones were broken ceremonial daggers. I must admit, I don't like the building. I find it very oppressive, um, very hard to breathe in certain areas of the building. And I class myself as fairly rational, I try to explain things away. I cannot explain the feeling I get in this building.
This isn't a friendly place, is it? It's not a friendly place at all. I mean, I've been ghost hunting now for 10 years, and this is one building you will not get me into on my own. The, the atmosphere is just so dark. Uh, it's, I don't know, you, sometimes you're even gasping for breath where, where the atmosphere just r really pins into you. But this area in particular, we're, we're standing on another site now where there's uh, another famous ghost story of the Ramin, of the Blue Lady. Now, we have a name for her. Unfortunately, it's only her first name. She's called Elizabeth. But it's reported that she's the ghost of a lady murdered by two highwaymen and she still haunts this particular area. John's daughter, Caroline, grew up in the house and is well acquainted with its paranormal goings on. Caroline, why do you think this building is so haunted? Well, I think it might be something to do with the fact that it's built on, well, below the base of a Celtic wor worshipping site where the church is, St Mary's Church, isn't it? Mm is actually on a Celtic worshipping site, and this building is at the bottom of the hill. So if they used to sacrifice children and toss the bodies down the hill, then this is where they're going to end up, and this used to be a pond, and it's on a geological fault, there's lots of energy in this area, it's on a ley line, all things combined, I think it was destined to be haunted. Now, my own personal experience in the Ram Inn was when I was setting up a trigger object for camera when we were doing it overnight. I put the object up on this shelf here. I had a colleague in the living room watching a monitor. As I turned round to go down the stairs, he saw on the monitor the trigger object picked up and thrown at me. It just missed the back of my head. So you've got two witnesses. Unfortunately, he hadn't pressed record. Oh, if he'd have no. pressed record, it would have been absolutely fantastic. We would have had evidence of that. Now, this room that we're stood in, in particular, is the witch's room. And it's not the sort of room you'd want to sleep in, really. You've got the ghost of a witch and her cat. And there's also the ghost that's reported of a crippled child who looks out of that window and waves at passers-by. Really? So. Quite How many spooky. people have seen that? Countless people have seen it. Lo local residents of Wooden walking past the Ramen have seen a child stood at the window waving at them. When I came back to stay with Dad about 30 years ago with my partner, and the cupboard got thrown down the attic stairs when I was staying here, and that was quite frightening. All my tarot cards went flying around the landing. Um, yeah, it was quite a spooky experience, but up until then, the ghost left us alone as children. OK, let's go through to the bishop's room. Now, there's a strange ritual that John has before he allows anybody to enter this room. He will grab this crook and he will bang three times. And he will say, is anybody there? And he will do that three times. Now, do I have to do it? Would you like to try? OK. Be spooky if someone answers. Is anybody there? Not at the moment. Now, it's reported by John that we have to do this to gain permission to enter the room. Otherwise, it will stir up the energy of whatever's in the room, and John has reported hearing this noise in the middle of the night. as if somebody is violently shaking that door. And there's nobody there? And there's nobody in the room. So John's, ever since, has used this ritual and it's stopped that effect. Gee. <laughs> now, this is the bishop's room. This has got a lot of scary-looking stuff in it. Yeah, and a lot of quite religious scary. overtones on the on the dressing table as well. Yeah. Which is quite scary. The, the ghost story in this room is of two monks that are seen walking along here and through that wall. Now, what's interesting about that wall is, years ago, prior to being re-bricked, there was a, 
a hideaway. Um, it was a sliding panel which the monks could walk into and hide away. The Southern Paranormal Investigation Group have spent many nights at the Ram Inn and say they know just how haunted it really is. Well, several things have happened to all of us, really, uh, throughout, throughout different rooms. This one time when we were actually in, in the bar area, uh, we were calling out. We hadn't, didn't have too much activity to start with, so we were calling out and try, trying to sort of entice something to speak to us or to touch us. And I had, like, a touch on the back of my head. And so we asked again. I sort of looked around to see whether I'd caught my head on anything or something. And then, uh, yeah, all of a sudden, you had a laugh, didn't you? Yeah, it was sort of after that, we um, tried a bit of calling out. And I said, you know, if that was you that touched Dan's head, can you touch me? And at the same time, I heard like a laughter, a real sort of deep laugh in my ear. When you say it was a touch, was it literally just a touch or a push or...? It was like almost hitting your head on something. It was, yeah, it was like, it was almost like a... Like, yeah, like it was definitely like a, like a proper touch, like almost pushing my head down. I personally, uh, as a, was doing an investigation, was sat in the bishop room, there was three of us in, in there, and the wall violently shook, shuddered very very hard behind us. There's no explanation for it It's almost all. like someone sort of stood there and slammed from the other side, sort of whacked right against where, where, where it's a wattle what and daub wall, it was easy to move, but it vibrated very violently and made everyone jump while I was there. John, you live here on your own now. What's it like to be in this house on your You're own? You're very conscious. You're not alone. Mm. <laughs> I sleep on the settee down below because it's so cold. Why do I hear heavy footsteps going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards? Why do I hear doors slamming in the building? And why do I hear... If you shut your eyes in a pub, all the babble of voices and laughter, that's what I hear. Every night? Not all the time, thankfully, no, mm. but quite often. You almost feel glad to have the company. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Chris, I think I can safely say that I've never seen anything quite like the Ram Inn before. It's extraordinary. It is an extraordinary building, isn't it? What do you think will ever happen to this place? Well, as long as John's here, he'll carry on doing the fantastic job he's done for the past 45 years and keep the building alive. After that, who knows? No one's going to want to buy one of the most haunted houses in the country, surely? Well, I think there'd be plenty of ghost hunters if they had the money who would love to buy the Ram Inn just to keep the history going. I don't think I'll be one of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll be back. <laughs> OK. Should we go to that pub? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Ragged Cot near Minchinhampton in Gloucestershire. It's now a very smart pub and restaurant with accommodation and a complete contrast to the ramen. Except for one thing, it's got a long history and a great ghost story. The Ragged Cot has been a coaching inn since the 17th century and today it's a well-respected local pub and restaurant. Its most famous ghost story revolves around the exploits of a former landlord turned highwayman called Bill Clavers, who was said to have killed his wife and child on the way to robbing a stagecoach one night. Paranormal researcher Chris Howley agreed to tell me the story. So, Michaela, this is where our story begins. One cold December night back in 1760, the then landlord of the Ragged Cot, one Bill Clavers, was plotting a highway heist. He was an alleged notorious highwayman and he basically got himself tanked up on run, basically to warm him up, but also to pluck up the courage to go and rob the coach from London to Gloucester at midnight. Now, up in his flat, he staggered out with two loaded pistols and his wife, petrified for his well-being, pleaded with him not to go out. She was carrying their young child. In his drunk rage, he pushed her to one side 
and they fell down the stairs. Bill Clavers then just left the building and went off trudging through the snow to go and hold up the coach. Right, McKenna, we're now on the main route from London to Gloucester, where the stagecoaches would have run past. I think what we need to do is picture the scene. It's a cold, freezing, wintry night in December as Bill Clavers comes from the ragged cot, complete with black mask, too much in pistols. He must have looked a formidable sight standing on this road, holding up the coach as it came through. Were there a lot of highwaymen along this route in those days? There were. Stroud is a notorious area. And in fact, just a mile further on up the road, is the hanging post where the tried and convicted highwaymen were put to their death. So he's got their loot. We, we don't know if he killed anybody at the time. No. And then what does he do? Well, after leaving the passengers in a complete terrified state, he would have turned, trudged back through the snow to the inn to count his hall. And this is where our story takes a more supernatural twist. Bill Clavers, after completing the robbery, is now sobered up after trudging hours back through the snow, is horrified to find the dead body of his wife and child. So they died from being thrown down the stairs? That's right. I mean, he's now in blind panic. Um, what to do with them? I mean, he comes through into the oldest part of the building where there was a chest. So he decides to dump the bodies unceremoniously into the chest. Could that have been in this part of the building? We think so. I mean, obviously, the building's changed significantly since 1760. But we would assume it would have been in this part of the building. So what happened after that, after he's dumped them in the chest? Well, by now, several hours have passed. He's cleaned up. Uh, he's come through to this area of the inn. And through this window here, the police have now caught up with him after tracking him with his footprints through the snow. Now, they spot Bill Clavers through the window and there's an exchange of gunfire. After the second shot, they hear a scream from within the building, but it wasn't down to the fact that Bill had been hit by a bullet. It was down to the fact that he'd just seen his wife, the apparition of his wife, walking across that corridor. With his child? With his child, yes. The chef, Rob Pierce has had his own experiences in the pub. The only paranormal experience I've had um, has been sort of 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning when I stay in the old building. Um, I often get woken up by a bang, and then I come downstairs and look around, and there's never anything about it. It sounds like someone's either uh, falling down the stairs or kicking the door in, um, but that's the only thing I've ever experienced. Sounds like someone's falling down the stairs. Well, that matches the history. It does, but it's also it's an old building in the middle of the night, so you never know quite what's going on. It just uh, it shakes you up a little bit. This area has more ghostly tales which relate to a previous landlady, Melanie Holden. Now, Melanie and her husband used to live up above this room uh, in the flat. Now, on the first couple of nights in the building, they had rattling doors, which they put down to bar staff coming up to attract their attention. When they used to open the door, there was nobody there. Well, that's quite spooky, isn't it? That's spooky in itself, but I think more frightening for Melanie's husband was waking up one night to see a spectral figure looming over the bed. He was scared out of his wits. Anything happened in this room itself? Yeah, something more physical in this room to do with this table, actually. Melanie was setting up for dinner and she'd laid out the cutlery, moved through into the bar area for a few moments. On returning, she noticed this chair had been pulled out as if somebody was sat ready to eat.
The manager, Sam Neal, has had a bizarre experience with the fireplace in the bar. Um, since I've been here, the most bizarre thing uh, has been when I put the fire out one evening. Um, I put it out and turned around back towards the bar, and within about 10 seconds, the, the logs are all back over and the fire was ro roaring away again. Could there have been any logical explanation for that? Um, not that I can really think of, other than you know, the wood's cooling down and it cracked and fell together again, but the ferocity of the flames, it was, uh, it was far too much for that, really. Well, Gloucestershire really is home to some fabulous old buildings and with a local history of highwaymen and robberies, it's not surprising there are some great ghost stories here too. I'm just glad it's modern day and I can get into a nice warm car and not a cold stagecoach to go home. See you next time. Bye-bye. More Great British Ghosts on Friday. We've an exclusive new double bill from Nine. Next, prepare to go googly-eyed over a strange-looking doll on the Antiques Roadshow.